Hello and welcome to this Tech Target video about installing a Hyper-V lab environment. So, what do we need to create a Hyper-V lab environment? Well, first off, we need a Windows 10 device. This can be a laptop or workstation. It must have a Windows 10 Enterprise Pro or Education um, license, a 46-bit processor, a CPU which supports virtualization, and uh, at least four gigabytes of memory. From my own personal experience, when using Hyper-V on a laptop or on a workstation, I would recommend going with at least a quad-core uh, processor, so a processor with four cores, and hyper-threading is also a good uh, performance boost, so I would use a quad-core with, with four cores and eight threads and use at least like 16 gigabyte memories when you want to run multiple VMs and have a really fast SSD hard drive. This helps a lot. So look for an NVMe uh, SSD to run your VMs on. After that, so if your machine is set up, um, one thing that you, that you might need to change is the uh, virtualization of your uh, processor. Sometimes it's turned off by default. Uh, you can change this in the BIOS, uh, but each laptop manufacturer or motherboard maker has a different way of enabling it. So I would just uh, Google your laptop or your motherboard uh, and see how you can enable virtualization mode for your CPU. It's usually easily found somewhere around advanced settings CPU. There's usually something like enable virtualization or enable VTC. So when you're done that, we can enable Hyper-V. And we do this actually with just this PowerShell command. There are other ways to do this, but the easiest way is PowerShell command. So we start up PowerShell, make sure to do this as system administrator and paste in what we copied from the website. Uh, I also included this uh, PowerShell command on the article website at target. So now it will run and it will enable the Hyper-V uh, module on my uh, Windows 10 laptop. You say uh, yes, it will restart the computer. So we'll be right back. The laptop has now rebooted and now we can start using Hyper-V. So from the start menu in the search uh, field, type in Hyper-V and there you will see the Hyper-V manager. Within the Hyper-V manager, you can create v VMs um, and on these VMs, you can test your application updates or you can test like an Active Directory level update. If your company is running Hyper-V as the primary uh, hypervisor, then you can also easily create uh, backups of your Hyper-V virtual machines on the production cluster and then import a copy uh, with, on your own laptop, uh, which makes it easier to test. Um, keep in mind that when you're testing things like a application update, you need to think about also the networking. So within Hyper-V, we have a virtual switch manager. You can create external, internal, or private virtual switches. With an external, uh, the virtual machines will be uh, connected to the same network that your laptop is connected. So they will get an IP address from that same uh, DHCP server. They can access the internet. They can access everything on the network. This can be handy if you're testing an application which requires, for instance, like a license key that is somewhere on the network or access to a database. Uh, keep in mind then when you are updating that application uh, that if the application also updates the database uh, that, yeah, when you are using external switch, it will update the database. Uh, what you can do in those situations maybe better is create a secondary virtual machine. Uh, and then create an internal or a private switch, which allows them to talk to each other, the virtual machines, but not the complete network. Uh, and that way you can uh, test a, if, if you put the database on one virtual machine and the application on the other, you can test the update and see how it is affected uh, on the database. 
without updating the database on production. So how do we start? Well, first we need to create a virtual machine. So I'm going to create new virtual machine. We can click next. We give the virtual machine a name. So I'm going to give it VM01. You can change the location where the virtual machine is saved. So if, for instance, if you have like a second SSD in your workstation or laptop, you can place them on those. That may be handy. In this device I'm working with, it has only one SSD. So I'm just going to leave it at the default. Here I have to choose the generation. So you can go for Gen 1 or Gen 2. Gen 2 is, of course, 2. It's, it's newer. It has support for uh, UAV uh, boot, uh, for more uh, security message and measures and that kind of stuff uh, and newer functions. Um, so the only difference is, is which, uh, which operating system are you choosing to install. But if you're uh, using like Windows 2019 or Windows 10, you can just go with the generation two. Now we need to uh, choose how much uh, memory this machine can use. So let's give it two gigs of memory. The dynamic memory part is um, it can, it will give uh, more or less memory to the machine uh, dynamically. Uh, so you set a limit like you can maximum go to that only if you need it um, Yeah, so You need to always think about how much memory is do I have on this system so I can check my own system here and I can see that I have uh, 16 gigabytes of RAM installed and I have 11 free so giving two gigabytes to a virtual machine is no problem when you are giving more gigabytes than you have free on your system, then it will go to the swap file and it will make uh, your virtual machines really slow. So don't do that. Here we choose uh, at the network, we can choose our switch. I'm gonna choose the default switch. There is a default switch created. It's an internal network. Uh, here we got to create our virtual hard drive. Uh, so it's a virtual hard drive file. I'm just going to keep it the same name. It will be saved here. This is how big it uh, can be. Uh, I'm going to make it a little bit smaller, 50 gigs, that's enough. So for instance, when I uh, are importing a, a virtual machine from a production cluster, I can then choose here that I want to use a virtual hard drive that already exists. Uh, here we have to choose which um, Installation media we're gonna choose. So I'm gonna choose uh, uh, to go with an ISO file. I got one in my downloads. It's a Windows 10. Next, it gives me an overview of what I'm gonna configure. And I click on finish. And the virtual machine is now created. So I can connect to it by pressing right mouse and then connect. And now I can start this virtual machine. I can press a key. And now it's just gonna give me the normal installation of Windows 10. So I'm gonna install Windows 10. This will take a, a couple of minutes. Uh, so I get back when it's installed. So our installation of the VM is done. And one cool thing um, with Hyper-V is you don't need to install host tools. So like with VMware or Sensor, you need to install uh, guest tools, which have the drivers. With Hyper-V, they are built into the Windows operating system that you are installing in the VM. So it's no need to do that. What you do need to mind, of course, is uh, licensing. So when you are using a Windows Server OS in your virtual machine, like Windows Server 2019, you of course need to have a 2019 license. Um, this can, of course, be a trial license for testing purposes if you're just doing a lab. And yeah, from here, I can now test my application updates. I can install a new version of Firefox and see how that handles with my SaaS applications before I roll it out to production, to all the other VDIs I might have. Um, 
So this is a really great tool. It's also a great tool to keep uh, a virtual machine as a system administrator from which you connect to your company. So for instance, your company has a VPN to manage servers. Don't connect that VPN directly from your uh, own device, uh, which you also use your personal accounts on or personal applications. Create a VM and then connect to, on that VM to the VPN of the company. It gives you an extra layer, an extra hop of security. So yeah, that's how you set up a Hyper-V lab. It's really easy. The, the most important thing you need to remember is running that PowerShell command to get the Hyper-V tools and then you're ready to go. I hope this was informative. Until the next one.